Well, hello there. My name is Erin Warren, and I am so excited that you are joining us on this journey through Romans. But I'm not alone. I have one of my dear friends here with me. Hey, Erin. How are you doing? I'm good. This is Stacy Thacker. Many of hey, you guys. know her from StacyThacker.com, um, author of five amazing books, um, oh, some of my favorites. You. So I'm excited that you are doing this with us. Yes, I, I'm so excited. You know, this is one of my favorite things. Well, you, <laughs> first I of mean. all, you and God's word and talking about it. Yes. It's um, I think it's important to start with the fact that Stacy and I are actually friends in real life. Um, and even though we live in the same town, we live on opposite ends. And so we live 7,000 miles apart in the same town. It's, it's, it's like, we don't live in the same town. Really? I know it, it really is. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and what drew us together may have been, um, first and foremost, our love of God's word. Um, but secondly, let's face it. It was coffee. I got mine. Let's see. I got mine too. <laughs> It's, it's fine. Yeah, God uses what he needs to draw people it's, together. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. So. Yeah, it's definitely true. Um, so I want to start a little bit with um, talking about the why behind these videos, because most people know me and you, both of our passions are first and foremost that women are getting to the word. Mm -hmm. um, and so we um, are, we're doing this journey um, through Romans. Um, I'm the women's ministry director at our church. And so um, we started doing these girlfriend groups, which was really Stacy's baby. Um, so tell us a little bit about girlfriend groups and, and what that journey of them coming together was for you. Well, first of all, um, a girlfriend group is a group of women that come together specifically to study God's word, but also in community. So the idea was born out of a new, um, Bible study series I wrote called the girlfriend's guide to the Bible and really packed within that title is the idea that when we study God's word, we want to come to it individually, but it magnifies our experience when we can come together with a group of women and discuss it and have community built around the word of God. I have found in my own life that the deepest, most treasured friendships like I have with you, Erin Warren, is when they're built on the word of God. And so a girlfriend group is just that it's women in community around the word of God. It's, it's word driven community. And we were so excited last um, fall to launch those at at our church first, which is so thrilling to me to get to see it planted and see there first because that's my community too. So um, it's been really neat to watch this take shape and um, grow up all through our women's ministry all across town. Um, and you have just been such an amazing part of that, Erin, and caught that vision very early because it's our heart, it's our, it's our heart together. And so it's been fun to watch that grow and send that out to the world too. So. Yes, absolutely. And so when we embarked on this journey through Romans this uh, winter, we're doing it actually in three parts. Romans mm -hmm. is such a rich book and it's deep, but it's foundational. It's complex, but it's simple. And we really wanted to just spend time with it. We didn't want to rush through. Mm -hmm. And so this first part that we are starting today is Romans chapters one through seven. And we, Stacy and I really wanted to do these videos, not because we want to tell you everything that we've learned, but we want to just give you maybe a couple truths, one or two nuggets that we found in our study. And our hope is that you will gather with women around your table and around your living room or around your coffee shop and, and discuss this and start conversations that are biblical um, conversations and the depth and the richness, like Stacy said, of what um, happens in a group mm -hmm. of women when it is founded on the word of God mm -hmm. has been really beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we are going to start today with a little bit of context. Stacy, talk about why context is so important when we are starting a book of the Bible. Well, context is really the who, what, why, where, when, how, um, kind of the background. If, you, if you've ever done any basic uh, research studies or um, historical studies or anything like you've written a paper in college or anything like that, you know that you have to establish those things first because it helps you to understand the intention of the writer and what's going on in the background. And so context to me is really um, the framework that everything else falls on in the view through which you're viewing that that particular part of scripture. Um, now this one, I keep wanting to say letter. I know all 
all uh, biblical uh, literature isn't letters, but this one in particular is, and so I keep wanting to say that. So, um, but it just helps us to um, frame what we're what we're studying in the best possible way. Right. All right. So let's start. What are some of the context, the who, what, when of Romans? Well, Romans, it's a letter, first of all. I think that's important. That's that big fancy word, genre. Um, it's a letter. It's a personal letter that um, the Apostle Paul wrote to the believers, the saints in Rome. And I think it's, in, it's really important to note that he didn't write to the Church of Rome. He wrote it to the saints. So mm. it's Christian believers in the city of Rome. Um, and I'm going to just glance now because I want to make sure that I get this um, con this timeline right. I think it was around 57 AD. Is that what, is yeah, that right, Erin? Is that what you have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know those dates are kind of, yeah, we think about 57 mm -hmm. AD, but that's important because um, Paul, um, as we know, the Apostle Paul, um, or we may not know, um, is that he came to, he was, he was a, a a Pharisee. He was a teacher of the law and he had a radical conversion experience on the road to Damascus where he met Christ and he was called as an apostle to the Gentiles to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Totally, completely turned him around, completely different direction than he anticipated. And so this letter to Rome was written from the city of Corinth after he had been in Ephesus, he went to Corinth and he wrote the letter of, Ro of Romans to the believers in Rome about 57 AD when he was um, basically on his way to Jerusalem to deliver gifts that the church had collected in the East for the believers in Jerusalem. Absolutely. And one of the things that um, we both found in our research that we just thought was really fascinating is that, um, so again, this book written around 47 AD, so about eight years earlier in 49 AD, um, the Emperor Claudius um, came to power. And at this time, the church in Rome, the believers in Rome were a mix of Jews and Gentiles. But when Emperor Claudius um, came to power, he hated the, um, he called them, dis they disturbed his peace, I guess, mm. in Rome. And so he expelled um, exiled all the Jews out of Rome. Mm -hmm. And actually two of the most famous ones that we know about, you can find in Acts 18 chapter, uh, verses one and two, and it's Priscilla and Aquila who mm -hmm. are the um, tent makers. And Paul ended up spending about 18 months with them in mm -hmm. Corinth. Mm -hmm. And so it's very possible that that might be the first place he really started to hear about this um, church, these believers, because they didn't have the internet back then. They didn't have... <laughs> um, Twitter and so <laughs> or texting <laughs> or texting um, they barely even had snail mail so yeah, right <laughs> to be able to hear about what was going on in other parts of the of the region it really depended on people who were traveling through the region mm. that's how he heard about um, these things and so it's possible I, um, that this is one of the the early times where he really got to hear what was going on in the Church of Rome. So that happened in 49 mm -hmm. AD. And then five years later, when Emperor Claudius died, the Jews were allowed back in. Mm -hmm. But the problem for them was that they came back to an almost entirely Gentile church. Yeah, um, the believers there um, were almost all Gentile. And so what we really start to see in the book of Romans and why this is so important is because we start to understand what Paul's um, reasoning for um, really writing this letter. And when you look at it through this lens, you start to understand why he addresses some of the things that he addresses in the way he does. And we'll mm -hmm. get to more of that as we study the book. But I want y'all to keep that in the forefront of your mind as we mm -hmm. study, because we really are seeing Gentiles who were raised as idol worshipers and Jews who were raised under the law coming together um, to now live a new life under Christ and the strife and the stress and the arguments that that might have. <laughs> the potential might, explosiveness of yeah, that is, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I just, can I just say real quick, Erin, I was thinking about this, like, as we think about our lives and how, how our churches come together. Um, it's not an exact comparison, but even possibly the comparison about someone who's raised in the church and somebody who becomes a believer in Christ later in life. And so I was thinking about from our perspective, sometimes those of us that have been raised our whole life in the church, it can be hard to accept people that come in by grace a different way. So I know that we may not have a Jewish background. We may not understand this whole idea, but we can maybe kind of apply it in our own lives in that way. So that's a great point. And, and it's true. And I, um, I think we'll get into some more of that next week when we yeah. talk about Romans one and two. Um, 
the other great thing about Romans um, is that it breaks down into about into four different sections. Um, chapters one through four are really kind of our need and God's righteousness. Mm. Um, chapters five through eight talk about new life in Christ. Um, chapters nine through 11 kind of link back to the Old Testament and talk about the Jewish unbelief and um, the difference between uh, Jews who are Israelites um, by birth um, and what that their unbelief means for the rest of the world. And then the last section is chapters 13 through 16. And really that's kind of practical advice. And I kind of see it as this unifying, okay, let's get back to page square one yeah. here. Here's some practical things that you can live out. Yeah. Um, now what's interesting though about the letter is that, um, Romans is not, uh, Rome is not a place that Paul had visited yet. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, it, it, he, he was longing to go there. It's one of the things I love in that first chapter is that Paul talks about how he is longing to visit them. And I, I think I love your point that he, he might've heard about them from other people, or he might've had friends that were there. Um, and he, he his path, he was so passionate for these people. And it just, it's, I, I just smile when I read through that first section, those first few verses, because his heart just comes right out. He's like, I'm, I'm longing to come to you, but I've, but I've been, I've been prevented. Like he literally said he'd been prevented. And it was, I think, I think it was because he was done in the east he had, he had done all the missions work that he was going to do in the east and his heart was to go west he wanted to go to rome he was ready to go but he had something he had to do and god kept preventing him and mm -hmm. the amazing thing is that paul ends up in rome as a prisoner he's in chains when he gets to rome eventually and it's like sometimes i think in our lives we think oh god can't possibly use this horrible hard thing in my life but god's like that's not an obstacle that's not an obstacle i'm gonna actually bring you into the city in chains and I'm going to use that even that. And so I love his heart for the Roman people. I think he, um, he loved them because um, he was called to minister primarily to Gentiles, but he has that Jewishness in him as well. And so he kind of, he kind of brings both those people together, doesn't he? I mean, isn't that really cool? Yeah. He's it's, ideal. He's the perfect very, person to, to preach right. the gospel to them. Right. Which just speaks so much to God in, in the gifts that he gives you. We often think the gifts he gives us our, our talents or our spiritual gifts. And we use these big words for that, but honestly, our story, mm. how we're raised, what he yeah. does in our life, that is one of the greatest gifts he gives us to be able to share the gospel. And Paul had a platform that no other apostle or missionary yeah. or disciple of that day had because of his upbringing. Yeah. And so we should never discount where we came from or what we've walked as something that God can't right. use because we, God doesn't waste anything in our life. That is, I love that point, Erin. That is so good. That's so good. Yeah. You Bible every girl, now, you. Every now and then, you know. Yeah. So well, good. Here's, here's the thing that I love about Romans. We, um, this past year, we celebrated the 500th year of the 95 theses. Um, that was when Martin Luther nailed the 95 theses on the wall and it started the Protestant Reformation. And our pastor was sharing about this and he said this little kind of quick sentence um, that really kind of um, most people probably glossed over. But for me, because we were getting ready to study Romans, he said he was reading the book of Romans and he all of a sudden realized that we had been doing religion wrong. Mm -hmm. And he saw something new. He saw this idea of faith and being saved by faith and not being saved by works. And it totally changed Martin Luther. Mm -hmm. And that is what started the Protestant Reformation. Mm -hmm. And he's not alone. Um, Augustine, who is one of, um, regarded as one of the greatest theologians in the early, I think he was around 580 or 387 mm -hmm. um, AD. He had walked away from faith as a young, mm -hmm. as a young boy. And he was reading Romans. And that is what changed him back mm -hmm. to faith. And John Wesley, who um, was listening to a reading that included Luther's um, um, prologue to mm -hmm. Romans and then reading Romans, um, it's what ignited a fire in him that led to the Methodist movement. Mm -hmm. um, and in 1833, um, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who is an English poet, said, I think St. Paul's epistle to the Romans is the most profound work in existence. Mm. The fact is that Roman is is a book that changes hearts and it changes people's minds. And what I'm so excited about is that 
God is going to draw his daughters to himself. And I just can't wait to see in six months as we walk through Romans, what God does in the hearts of women who study the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. I love that. And Aaron, I love in, in um, one eight where he says, um, I have heard about your faith that mm. has spread all over the world. And just what you said, that started, those seeds started in Rome through this letter where Paul is preaching the gospel right out of the gate. Gospel, gospel, gospel. He's a slave to the gospel and he's preaching it and they spread it to the world and it impacted not just their world, but generations and generations. generations. And it's so yeah. cool to think about our faith being spread to the world as mm. we work through this book. I mean, it's such a challenge and such a beautiful, I, I just think that's something we need to be, continue to think of what could possibly happen in our lives in the lives of generations that follow us and the lives of our friends and our, and the women at our church and all over the world as we study and engage the scripture too. Absolutely. So this week we are diving into Romans chapters one and two and, um, keeping in mind the context, um, what are some quick study methods, Stacy, that we can do, um, just to, to read Romans one and two this week? Well, first of all, keeping the context in mind, um, there was one thing I found that I thought was so cool. This is just a little quick tidbit. Paul uses a lot of questions in the book of Romans. And mm -hmm. um, one writer that I found, um, and I, sorry, I can't remember his name, said that Paul had 85 questions wow. in the book of Romans because as they were reading the letter, he would want them to stop and engage and think about what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So one really cool thing is just to mark the questions and think about them, like think about them yourself. That's a great um, point. Mm -hmm. Now I, in looking through Romans chapter one, I don't think, because I've looked at it briefly, um, I don't think they're questions, but there are definitely questions that he asks in chapter two that are so yeah. good to consider. So that would be one quick thing that I would do. Um, another thing um, I would do is find a keyword. I love that sometimes as we're studying scripture, and I, I know that we've talked about this before, Aaron, is that God will spotlight certain things for us individually. Mm, um, yeah. uh, you know, God's word is a light into our path, right? And so his truth is always true. But sometimes I think God takes the holy light of his word and there's something specific that he'll draw our own personal hearts to and to go through and mark those key words. Maybe it's gospel. For mm. me, one of the things I am personally doing is looking for the word glory all oh, throughout the book of Romans. And what does God say about his glory in this book? It might be different for everyone else. And I hope that it is because when we come together as a group and we discuss it, that's when that full picture comes yes. together. It's so beautiful. So there's just a couple of quick things. Perfect. Well, Romans one and two this week, and then join us back next week. And we'll discuss um, some of the little tidbits and highlights that Stacey and I have found and give you the challenge for the week after. So thank you so much for joining us. And um, we pray that this week, God will meet you in the pages of Romans chapter one and two. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks.